Absolute madness. Jump into it. Fish Room Tour. You members. Appreciate you all. Thank you all so much for the support. You guys are helping make all this happen. But where do we even begin? <laughs> Currently 81 degrees in here. 59% humidity. It fluctuates all the time. It's gone from 68 to 84. And the humidity has been from like 40s to 80s. So my fish aren't sensitive, they get a nice natural environment, really, temperature-wise. I do get a lot of nice, natural, yummy bugs that fly in here for snacks for these guys as well. But as far as the layout, I have naturally been changing my mind over time. So the layout and what I want to do with it keeps changing. I wanted to do like more gallery tanks and not as many like trying to cram in numbers of tanks, but collectoritis always kicks in. Here we're going to put 20 highs, which I'm going to have a whole bunch of them. You guys may have seen that I got from the Petco sale. These 40 gallon breeders eventually, they'll be probably, I don't know, breeding tanks. And I would like to do a nice planted setup at some point, but I may eventually make this more like my workspace and get the nice display tanks out somewhere else. Over here, that'll be more display. Also working on breeding and also holding community fish, collect alls, that kind of sort of stuff. This rack and all the way back on the other side that goes all the way down, that is all shrimp. Even though I put fish in there because, well, it needs space to breed fish. And then on here, also more breeding, more gallery kind of looking at. But it always, as much as I want to have a gallery tank, it always turns into breeding because you can never have enough tanks for breeding fish. You really can because you need paint space for the parents you need space for the juveniles you need space for all the fry you can see here the pond's doing good too another collect all of mine shelly's still going strong lots of young ones in there look at them of all different sizes big old thing of pogo stem and octopus Rainbow fish all doing good. You guys may remember these guys from the old house. Some of you guys have been around for a long time. We've got the Cynodonis in there. Ooh, they need to clean out their trap. It's actually got a bunch of fungus eggs in there. I should have been checking that. I saw them battling the other day. I knew I should have been checking on it. And there's actually, oh yeah, there's one right there. See if I can zoom in here. Celebes, little baby Celebes half eggs. Right there in the center. There's a few of them in here. But this thing's been doing awesome. No filter, all these fish. I only run two of these lights now. I don't run all four. If I did, I would just be growing algae like crazy. And then as far as getting into individually all these tanks, I guess we'll go ahead and start over here. This is my 40 by four high rack. Got a few plants on top. That's for a grow out for Sarah, plant lady Sarah, AKA lady LRB. Up here, I just grow Anubias since they don't really need much light. And if you put algae in, or if you put food in, algae tends to grow. So I don't really feed much up there at all. Cause I don't have to, I don't really keep fish up there, but good for views, good for Anubius storage. And then here, these tanks have just kind of run amok. There you can see the Anubius a little better. It could use a little more light. Got the Snow White here up on this one. The other one was empty. Underneath it, some Coral Blue Platties, a bunch in there. Underneath that, Bacopa Carolina, a huge, huge forest of it. And these are some Clasioensis rainbows. Can't remember if they're a um, Chilnathernia type or which type they are. I'll have to double check with Gary. Or look them up. And underneath them, I've got some Tiger Bow growing out with some Clown Killies. And some gold dust mollies. I think that's all that's in there. 
have a catch-all for some babies. I need to find some of the, actually most of that stuff, new homes. And in here I've got a ton of Glossolepis maculosus babies. I'm not really going to focus talking about the plants so much since there's just so much to cover in this fish room. But tons of those little Glossolepis maculosus babies. Down here I've got one of those rare rice fish. Mat Matiolensis, I believe is the name of them. Cool blue eyes on them. It's like a big blue eye rainbow fan. Even though they don't consider blue eyes rainbows anymore. They're pseudomagules, but they kind of remind me of them. It's really neat. And up, up, up above them, we got the rainbow tiger antlers. And next to the rainbow tiger antlers, forest of algae and rotalia. And then also more baby glossolepis maculosis. It doesn't seem like there's that many of them in here. Oh, you see a little more, yeah. You look underneath the water, you see them more at the top. And up above them, we got the gold dust molly parents. As well as a bunch of Cynodonis catfish, which that water that you hear running, one of their tanks that I set up today. This is as fresh of an update as you can get. This is the Friday, the day before I released this video for the members. Then in here, you can't see him. Oh, actually, you can't see him down here. Oh, they went running. Pygmy chain loaches. I need to get like some rock piles or some caves for them to be able to breed in. Because this is perfect breeding for them. But I think they need caves. But that does it for the 4x40 rack. Might as well hop in over here. Shut this water off so you guys may be able to hear better. Here I've got some 55 gallons. Turn to the side as you enter the door here. Which should be really cool because you'll be able to just look down them. And you'll have so much depth. But filling that up right now. Got three of them up above, and then 75s, and then I got a low boy, another low boy, and then all the way 75s on the bottom. And for this bottom one down here, I've got a bunch of dwarf neon rainbow fish babies, or at least I had them in here because the parents were community breeding. I don't know how many is in here now. There's a bunch of shrimp that I'm seeing. I'm not. There's a smaller dwarf neon. I can imagine that since I cleared it out, there's not a lot of babies living in them. So this tank actually needs redone. I can put new fish in there. Roast rope fish in here, but they seem to be hiding right now. Camera shy, they saw me and decided to hide, but I need to move them guys soon. And then I'm gonna put them up here with these guys. I'll probably keep them with the rice fish, see how that works with them. These guys haven't really been breeding for me. Dean said it looks like I only got one sex of them. I swore I saw some with some, with some eggs, but I don't know. I haven't had any luck yet, but rock piles for the win. And then little boy about to get some water. I'm thinking grass, air grass going up. I don't know yet. I'm still debating it. And below that is this one tank where I was catching all my, putting all my platinum rice fish, as you guys can see, if you guys have seen my rice fish video, how many I had, there was a ton of them in here, and I have been selling them pretty quick, but I've got rock piles, and this has just grown algae like crazy, I don't know if it's the type of rock, the brown, the black of it, that just... I put pearlweed in here, hoping it'd grow fast. I don't know if it's because I had a lot of fish in there. I did feed it a lot. And with the shallowness, with the light, it's just an algae magnet. And then this will be the new home for the Cynodonus lucipennis. That way they can breed out in the rocks, see if they'll do that. I don't know if they will. I'll still put traps in, but it still should be neat to see them. Swimming in there, probably put some uh, Brazilian penny ward on the top. That way they feel nice and covered. Then underneath here is a Pontamagita in forest with some 
catch-alls, mascara barbs that I recently got, um, probably like six months ago, just to have new blood of them, always helps to deepen gene pools. Then there's some catfish and red sword tails, golden minnows, and female millennium albino. I've got the pair in another tank, I just... I've been braiding them with pears instead of trios. For some reason, they tend to like that. Because they were just beating her up, so I had to split them up. But up above them, I've got the baby mascara barbs. So the mascara barbs were in here. And they left me a ton of babies behind, which I'm super stoked about. And have a video on how that all happened with these guys mega babies. And uh, just how I did that and everything. So check out the channel for that. And inside, I've got this big fry rack. And this fry rack has actually been a problem for me. I'm about to put Shelly's in here. I've had a bunch of coral blue platies in here. But for some reason, most of the fish... Oh, you can see paper towel here, too. I had a small leak, so... I just use a paper towel to soak it up and then the air just kind of dries it. But I've been having some issues with the fish. Maybe that's my issue that I haven't been keeping these clean. I don't know, but for some reason, uh, like my antlers and stuff, the zebra car has been doing good, which I gotta find her a new home. She's gonna get a new home after this next club meeting because I just, I don't have a mail for her. I wish I did, I wish I had a mail for her. I would love to have some more zebra cars. So who knows, if you guys know anybody that has any, let me know. But then I got a bunch of 20 highs here, which I've got a catch-all for dwarf neons, um, some melanotania pictos, and then some CPDs. There's only a couple of the pictures left. I don't have many. It'll probably be the ones I'm keeping. And then half beaks. So these half beaks. Inside here is some coddle punctatus, but for some reason their water is just straight green. Now if you look at the light, the light is over this tank, but not these other two tanks. So these tanks have been going with nothing but the ambient light really. But the ones that are directly underneath it, man, the algae, same story over here. The algae is just crazy. Look at the difference from the ambient light to the algae. Granted, I don't get much growth out of these tanks, but hey, that's fine with me because I don't have to mess with them. There's a swamp picked in there. I'm trying to specifically breed a certain pair. And next to them, I've got the Cardinal Tetras. I'm trying to rock pile them, but the problem with them is they go into the rock piles and then some always get left behind by the time I musical fish them, so I never have much luck with them. I still gotta get them two out. And then up underneath them, looks like I got three more pictures left down here. And then I've got a bunch of dwarf neons next to them, growing out, empty tank. Didn't have quite a bit of Daphne in it. I'm not seeing much in here. There's a little bit of Daphne in there. I need to put some of that green water from the top down in there. Yeah, there's, there's some Daphne. In. So I haven't been putting anything in here. Just that way I know I'll have some backup Daphne in somewhere. Then yellow shrimp tanks, which I've been pulling so much out of these. These guys, this tank's about reset. They need some water changes. Um, what are these? Uh, pictus as well. Yellows. More yellows. Then Italian crap. Uh, a bunch of fire reds up above them. Fire red. Woo, she hot. More fire reds. Well, see, they look good right now. Lately, I've been pulling them out. I'm like, eh. They're looking good. They go through their phases, I think. That guppy grass looking good in there. And then half beaks. Got more Celebes half beaks in here. Some bigger ones, but they're probably hiding from us. Oh yeah, I see now. Here's the male. 
blends in. Look how that thing blended in there. But look at the color. Beautiful. And here we got some platinum rice fish. And here a bunch of them baby mascara barbs. I had to pull and separate some of them. I also got some orange shrimp in here. I always try to breed some orange shrimp in here, but uh, fish always take over. What can I say? And then this is going to be a catch-all for some of my miscellaneous rainbows. Underneath here, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but there's this whole rock and sand kind of thing. Now, granted, if I don't grow algae, that covers it all. You know, I'll probably end up putting plants in there. Who knows? I don't know what I'm going to do with that one yet. I'm sure I will find a fish. Oh, here's a rope fish. You can see him on the side here. You can run, but you cannot hide. They actually do get in the rock quite a bit. They're in there. They like that algae pillow and all that stuff. But I'm liking the progress of it. As they say, Rome wasn't built overnight, but it is all growing and going, which I'm super excited about. But let's go ahead and go over here to the shrimp tanks. I've got a bunch of 20 lungs that I'm putting on the side. I'm getting ready, now that I got all those new tanks, I'm gonna put some up top, and then also down below, which makes 20, 20 lungs. And this will be all my light white substrate kind of shrimp. And currently, I have some crystal blacks here. Which, big shout out to Gardener Eater. He hooked me up with all these. He's got some nice shrimp. And I've got some black medecas in here. They haven't really been doing much for me. Then in here, I've got the blue bolts. As well as some baby rice fish. Empty, empty. I've got some green jades down here. I need to get this water real quick. Some tiny ones. Oh well, no. Where are they? Oh, they're back there on the rock. There they are. Let me get this water in my phone real quick. All right, I'm back. And next to the green jades, these three are empty. I was trying to breed out the shiners, but for some reason they weren't really eating on this light substrate. I don't know why, but they're also not eating in their new thing, so know what their deal is but next to them hard to see here i threw in a bunch of the leaf litter there we go threw in a bunch of the leaf litter there's some swayze snails in there there's also a bunch of orange eye blue tigers and then on the other side of them i got another 20 by 20 high long of course you can see i've got to still add some tanks i got some julia chromis marler right here I think they've paired off because they've been kind of aggressive. I don't want to mess with them too much. Their tank's really dirty. I'm going to leave them like that just because I do want them to end up breeding out. Next to them, I've got some tangerine tigers. Hard to see in there. There is some in there, I hope. Oh, yeah, they just blend in real well. There they are. Really hard to see through with this camera. And here I've got snowball shrimp. And then here I've got some of them baby shiners, which they're getting pretty big now. This camera, once again, it's really hard to pick them up. And I wish I had time to really do it right, but fortunately I don't. Oh, there's one, there's one. Good boy, showing up at the end there. I've got some blue velvets I'm working on. Line's a little rough, but they're starting to look good. And up underneath them, I've got the yellow King Kongs, which I've been keeping my Caradinas on the Brightwell, as far as my black so straight. And then I've got some red shrimp I've been working with in there but obviously it's just algae forest now with the caradine and with the neos i've been using the eco complete as far as the black but here are these guys and you can see they haven't been eaten which i gotta get that 
food out of there. It's not good for them. And then down here is a line of orange shrimp. But it's been throwing some weird things, so. They will probably need it. Yeah, there's like a green here back here that it threw. Like the rest look all right, but then there's like these randos that come out of it, which is kind of weird. And then in here is some crystal blacks next to them. So still a lot of space that I could fill in for shrimp. And eventually I will have six more 40s on this back side here. Eventually we're going to do a huge fry rack system and some system back here for those. And then in the front of this shrimp tank rack here is six 40 gallons, so going three high. And up top I've got my yellow line, which these guys are absolutely fire. Look at that yellow. It's like a painted yellow. These guys are cool. So we got the black lava rock with them. Blended in with the Eco Complete. And up underneath them, I've got the blue dream, the straightest line, which they've got some of my rock that I've got from the yard. Look at all that texturing. You look, look in closer and closer and it's just covered with shrimp. Look at this down here. Absolutely everywhere. How nice is that line? That is legit. All the way down. And there's that really rare crib. Mario. And then up underneath them, I've got the fire reds. Same kind of rock, but it doesn't have all that green patine to it. It has a little bit on there. But once again, gotta get close up on the rock to really see them all. There you can see them. Bunch of fire reds. And then next to them, I've got some crystal red bees that I'm working on. Well, here's one. So bright, you can see it through the sunlight. That's what I like about the bees. They're super colorful. And they've got a ton of driftwood to chew up on. They love to live on the driftwood. Up above them, the platinum rice fish group that I've been braiding out. And up above them, nothing yet, but a bunch of baby platinum rice fish that are still growing out. Here you can see a nice little swarm of them. Absolutely love those fish. So that does it for the shrimp rack here. And next to it is kind of my catch-all for tanks. Besides up front, of course, I got the 340s going on here. I've got the Glossolepis maculosus rainbow fish. Uh, trio that I'm actually breeding them out in. So everybody's hungry right now, so I don't want to spook them too much. That's why I'm not getting up on in their face, especially whenever I'm breeding. It's hard to shove a camera in their face and make them feel comfortable and get them to breed. But a bunch of shrimp in here. This tank's getting reset. I had a bunch of baby pictas in there. Had to pull out, reset, and then up above them, Glossolepis maculosus baby rainbows which some of these are getting some decent size to them i need to pull this algae out give them a little more space bust up the microorganisms a little bit uh, that way they'll feed off of them but over on the other side as i mentioned is my catch-all for tanks so i've got like two and a half gallons 10 gallons something in between like a 13, there's five gallons. Actually, those are tens. There's some weird ones. I don't know, there's some weird catch-all 16s, 13s and everything between, but this is meant for 20 highs. So eventually this will all be 20 highs. I've got all the tanks from this last cell. So I'll eventually have to find somewhere new for all these. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but we'll figure it out as time goes. And this will be eventually all rainbow fish. So this should be just be a rainbow fish breeding factory for me. That is what I want it to be eventually. And up underneath here, I'm not going to get into these too much, but I've got blue dreams, more blue dreams, 
Nubius. There was some steak antlers in here, but I didn't really like how they were breeding out. So, I mean, they're in here somewhere. Surprised they're not up front because I haven't fed them. And then there's more Blue Dreams in here. It's so dark in there because this Bacopa with the light adjust. Look at this up underneath there. This Bacopa is gone insane. This is why you cannot see in those tanks. This is just bouncing tank to tank to tank. And then underneath here is some dwarf neons and coral blue platies. So all those need to be moved out, caught, organized. And then my volcano guppies, which looks like I've only got females now. These females are brutes when it comes to those volcano guppies, especially when they're chunky monkeys. They got big like that. But I do got a male and a trio elsewhere. And then in here, I've got more Glossolepis miraculosus. Another trio. You can kind of see in and through there. That's actually plants that have grown from my yard dirt that were nor more towards the wet area. I wanted to see what would grow out of it. Naturally, all these plants grew out of it. Now, this bladder wart. The thin kind of stuff, not that more broad green stuff, but the thin kind of stuff's not the best. But I think the other is a Sagittaria, but these are checkerboard cichlid barbs. They're starting to get some size to them, color to them. Then in here was some dwarf neons. I need to reset this tank. There's a couple straggler babies, not many. And in here was rainbow tiger endler like rescue catch from whenever the tanks, which I got, didn't talk about these tanks over here. This one busted, flooded my whole floor and uh, had to rescue them and throw them somewhere. But there is actually still some rainbow tiger inlers that are still in here. You can see them down there moving around. So, I mean, I am still using the tank. Still working, they don't care. There's nothing in here. And in here, there's actually some pandagars, big pandagars, but the odds of seeing them is very slim right now. And the white clouds, I've got a couple of hatchet fish in there as well. And this one's pretty much empty. It's got a bunch of red shrimp in it, some mystery snails. There was a bunch of baby rainbow, dwarf neon rainbows. That was in it, but I pulled them all out because I'm about to move all these tanks anyways. These will be the shellies for the sump. A bunch of them down there. I like to keep multiple colonies if possible. That way you can blend them and have different genes. And then Millennium Orange Albino Rainbow Pair. Need to musical fish them soon. I've got a blue Delta here, nice IFGA strain and some babies and then i've also got some placos down there oh you can see there but i think it's a male and a, uh, two males so i don't know i don't know i don't think i've never gotten any hang out of them i had them forever i think they are the uh l three threes and then over next to them i've got uh, more dwarf neon. I think a dwarf neon pair in there. And then there used to be more dwarf neon babies in there. Pulled them all out. But anyways, back to the catch-all area. Rack soon to be rainbow fish area. This is empty. Pulled the pygmy chain loaches out of there. Had the Clausioensis out of this one. And these are the lime green endlers. I haven't even offered these for a while. But man, these things are a nice line of lime green endlers. And Stardust Mollies, more of those. I love these little fish growing up. And then in here, should be some Chilnothernia babies. I haven't seen them for a while. I hope they're still in there. They were the Fasciata Pagai, which I'm sure we can find some babies here in another tank. Then next to them, another Blue Dream tank. Because I can't keep up with you guys on those blue dreams. This is empty besides a couple of shrimp. This one I just recently put some rock in. Even though I'm about to turn all these tanks into 20 highs. 
I wanted to try to breed out some Ember Tetras first. And then this one was Daphne a tank. Still is Daphne a tank. You can see back there, they go going bananas. And up above them, I got a random rummy nose. And I had some Call Starburst Endlers that I was, they just didn't have color on them. They didn't look that good. So I was like, okay, let's put you over here, see what happens. But I ended up coloring up nicely eventually. And this one is empty. I was hoping to get some Ember Tetra babies, but they probably don't like that light shining straight through them. They're more like, let me breed in the dark kind of fish. So they probably don't like that. Still trying to musical fish them again. And then here are the volcano guppies again. And where is my male? Is it all females again? What the heck? You kidding me? It is all females. There's literally not one male. Now I do have babies of these guys inside, but I might have to hunt down another male because they've all gone female. What? Crazy. And then here is some random rainbow fish. The door. Um, actually, to be honest, I'm not sure what kind of rainbow fish those are. And then here is, I think they were calling these red Puerto Rican inlers. It was a club by, I figured I'd see how it would come out. There's some neat ones in there. But it's not a very straight line, so I haven't ever offered them. And then I've got the blue star inlers in here. Not many left in this one. Next to them, I've got quite a few more. Still, this is one yard dirt, leaves. I have water with that. Maybe play around with some breeding. There's a blue star, a bunch of them in this tank. Then in here, I've got these rare Tetras. Really can't ever remember their name. Starts with an M. But really neat. Shout out to Danikin Aquatics for hooking me up with them. I need to put them in Probably that tank or one of my rock tanks. But I bet they've been breeding in there. Look how feisty those things are with each other. And then a bunch of miscellaneous rainbow fish in here as well. And on the back side of it. And of course we got plants and everything on top. A little bit of storage. Eventually I want to work all this storage off of it. Oh, there goes my gimbal. Oh, but there's my drying rack. And on the back side of the catch-all rack here, I've got a bunch of 75s, which I absolutely love big tanks. More big tanks for display, the better, and breeding, and raising up stuff. But, you know, space is limited, so you can only have so much with them. That's why the 20 longs and 20 highs come in. But I've got some black mollies and some lime green inlers. They're hard to see in this tank as far as the lime green in there's but they're as green as the other ones it's just the light really fades them out big time with the contrasting of it but i was trying to see if i would get i mean they're doing well together but hopefully we'll see how the numbers go with the mollies see if they don't predate so much on their own and then underneath them i've got some brachardi, which I don't know if I'm going to keep these guys. We'll see. I probably will. Because what I plan on doing with this section that's over by the 4x40s, I, was, I plan on doing the racks of 20s for cichlids. So that will be my cichlid area. Uh, one set will be for South American cichlids and one will be for African cichlids. Uh, more of the smaller types because, of course, you don't want to put the big ones in a tiny little... I don't know where they are, though. You don't want to put them in a... This is kind of why I don't know if I want to keep them or not because I hardly ever see them. Oh, there's one. The fairy cichlid is what it's also known as. Now, I do got these van seats here that I can sit and watch them on, which is really cool. But I plan on getting rid of these, and this is all going to be 20 longs down here. That's going to be all endlers and guppies. So 
I will finally have a place to organize all them and they won't be in my catch-all. So everything is going to start to have its own space in place. And this is my drying rack for now, which this is just temporary where I like to dry and store things that I use throughout the day. But underneath the cichlid, the Rashardi, I've got a bunch of CPD, young CPD here. Here's a young straggler. He's not with the group. I don't know why. Oh, there's a couple just swimming by some shrimp. I need to get the shrimp and CPDs out of this tank and then it will eventually put the parent group in here as well. But there is a bunch of them. Come on, focus. There's a bunch of them in there. Oh yeah. And then next to them, there's a ch the Chilmatherinia pagai. Gay eye, however you say that, guy. Bunch of them. Another 75 Brazilian penny ward just going bonkers. Oh, see, there's a little baby. Let's see if we can get him in here. There he is, right in the center. So these things are breeding like crazy. Oh, here's another one just feeding. Right in the midst of everything. That's brave. Brave little guy. So I need to pull them out soon. That's definitely a sign I need to pull them out. In my Taiwan lily forest, this tank is absolutely insane. Look at the roots on here. I've got the platinum rice fish in here. I've also put some swamp pictas in here, the swamp guppies. The micropocelia picta. But this Taiwan lily is just going nuts up top. And I pull out of it every week and it just comes right back like nothing ever happened. And up here you can see where I've been pulling out the Brazilian pennywort. Which is growing back but I have been thinning it out up here. But once again these is full of CPDs. Oh here's a tiny, oh a bunch of little tiny ones. See him swimming around here. He's kind of a bigger one. There's a lot of Daphne in here, so it helps with the uh, big one predating on these smaller CPDs. And then in the basket up above them, that is the breeding group of CPD. So up above and in there is a bunch of Brazilian pennywort. And then there's also I don't know, a group of maybe 10 or 8 of them in there. You can kind of see them moving around in there a little bit. But I don't mess with them too much. Just throw some food in. And they lay eggs. And then eventually I've got babies. So I'm going to musical fish them down into the bottom here. And do that again. But I'll be super excited to get all these 20 longs for the inlers and guppies and I am going to turn them on the side and normally that's not the funnest to do with fish but with guppies and inlers they always come to the front of the tank so I don't really care and then over next here this is where all the magic actually happens this is the shipping area this is the ideal area the editing area just where I just get stuff done a little bit of storage too, which I plan on building onto that more as well. Like I mentioned, this will be the new cichlid area. So that does it for the fish room area. Well, there is one other space. Let me go into here to where I was going to put my wet room. So eventually I do plan on doing a water system and stuff. There's like a bathroom storage area in here. But I've got to pull out this shower, which does not fit through any doorway so i'm gonna have to bust through this wall which i may do some work on that later too but i've got to pull that out i don't want to break it up because i could probably make a tank or something out of it and then eventually i'll put some filters over there for the water have some nicer filter and then a wet area to clean and dry and have all my stuff and my dry rack in here instead of having it out here to where i can have more tank space 
And of course, gotta have your closet of stuff, like towels, furs. I haven't been doing much furting anymore for a while, but also motivation. Get your blood flowing, the strength and breath. I try to remember those things. That's what keeps me going. You see my frog cup as well. That's what I use to catch all the random frogs I get in here time to time. But that does it for this fish room tour for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And thank you, thank you all so much for the support. Until next time.